going to, we've cleared all this space here. We gotta disconnect this guy. I don't know where any of this is gonna live yet, but at least this is starting to be a bit clearer because this wall is coming down today. We've got our posts or poles, I guess. So <clears throat> those are gonna be set up and then we're gonna have this vapor barrier and we're gonna try and create kind of like a tunnel with an air mover going out one of the windows so that as we're knocking down all this plaster, hopefully the dust will be just moving right out the window and we won't be getting too much of it coating stuff on the inside. Kids are at grandma's, but when they come home, they're gonna be helping us. So we have lots of hammers and somewhere here, I don't know where. Where did it, where'd all the masks and everything go? Oh, I see goggles. So everyone's gonna get safety goggles. Oh, I thought that was only one mask. I didn't look closely enough. And there's four masks, so we'll all be protected. Don't check oh, the electrical. We're gonna check some electrical. <gasps> He's done that to me so many times, it doesn't even scare me anymore. I wanted to take this opportunity to say welcome to my channel and if you are new here welcome or if you are returning welcome back. Today's video I think you've probably gotten the gist from the little clips that I've shared so far but we are tearing down this wall that you're seeing right here. This is a load bearing wall that separates our kitchen from our living room and we want to open it up and make it open concept and we are renovating our kitchen. So this is the very first video in our kitchen renovation series. I hope you enjoy. Um, we're not fully taking down this whole wall today. We're going to take it down to the studs and in the next video you'll watch us um, build up our temporary walls and put in our beam. It's a lot of work and it's a messy job but this is the first step to getting this kitchen renovated so I'm super excited that you're here. If you like what you're watching please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, a like, subscribe and um, I'll try to go through things as the video continues to sort of explain what we're doing and why. Cupboards are empty, ready for demo. Some stuff that I don't use all the time, Andrew's taken downstairs for me. And then the stuff that I'm quite sure I'll still be using during demo, like for the next couple weeks, like our pots and our pans and everything, are gonna stay up here in bins. Um, Andrew made the good call of bringing up the lids to cover them for now while we do the demo. And then probably what we'll do is maybe just have them like lining this wall open so it's easy to access so we just kind of got to figure out homes for this stuff and then we're pretty much cleared to start demoing the wall Cooper's bowl for his food, Cooper's our dog, sits pretty much right in front of that wooden cabinet and so you could see how much dog food he had pushed under that cabinet over the last four years. Um, it's kind of funny, kind of gross. And what you're going to see next after this is we're going to start removing the, the hood or the fan for our where our stove was. We're actually moving the location of the stove in the new kitchen. And I don't know if this will be controversial or not, but we're actually not going to have a fan. We looked into it a little bit. It's primarily mostly for smells, which are usually for oils and meats. And we really don't cook a lot of either of those things in the house. And it was going to be sort of just an obstruction and just another thing that we would have to install when we don't even use this one. Very, very rarely do we use it. So we've decided for the new kitchen, we're just not going to have one. Wall there. <laughs> Can we go buy more 
vapor barrier? Uh, this, we could. could well, how, do you use that or we're spending five hours cleaning uh, yeah. dust? Yeah, let's go buy more vapor barrier. Right. Well, we've got enough for one. <laughs> yeah, like this fits perfectly We just need one more here. roll, so. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Vapor barrier acquired. Barrier is installed. So, right here is where we're going to put the air mover. And then we've got the barrier that comes all the way to the dining room and then wraps all the way around behind me. And then we have that one window so that we're hoping that the dust is going to get all blown out that window. And this may seem like a lot of work for just this one wall behind me here, but when we redid the bathroom and knocked down some walls then, it gets very dusty. These are plaster walls, and I would rather not have to clean everything a million times throughout this process. The nice thing is, is it's just this wall here, so we can get this whole wall, like the plaster off of it today. Um, we'll leave up the actual structure, and then we can take the vapor barrier down and we won't have to worry about not being able to get around easily. All right, vapor barrier's up here. Here we go. Oh, kids are home. Kids are home. Oh, we gotta get the reaction for sure. Uh, Finn's yeah. got his hammer there. Yeah. Oh, yours are fogging up high. You guys ready? All right, guys. There you go, Finny, get it, get it. Come on, mommy. Oh, Ollie's going for a hammer now. Let's see, Finny, let's see. If you have never had to demo a plaster wall, and you never have to, <laughs> try to keep it that way. It's fun in the sense that you know you're creating some change in your home that is purposeful and intentional and is something that you want and it's going to be an end product that you're really proud of but it is a lot of work i i will confess i am not a renovator i don't have a lot of experience with tools 
And um, yeah, it's a lot of work. Swinging a hammer is a lot of work. I have a lot of respect for people who do this every single day because it's tiring. Um, We got the kids involved. They quickly lost interest (laughs) and decided they wanted to watch some TV while we did this. Because of the way we had the air mover going, you had to kind of stand a certain way if you were like you had to be sort of beside the area you were working at on one side, because if you tried to stand on the other side, then you were just getting all the plaster sort of blown in your face. So you had to be intentional about where you stood. I got so much plaster in my hair and down my shirt into my bra and it was getting caught on my back brace. And um, yeah, it's uh, it is a labor of love for sure. The trick to removing this plaster, because you can see Andrew's getting off really big chunks and that's kind of what you want. So you really want to sort of hammer along the studs to try and break the plaster free from where it's been nailed into the studs. Um, And then that way you can kind of pull it off in big sheets. If you're just sort of hammering like willy nilly and you don't really have a rhyme or reason to it, you're going to just be getting little chunks and it's going to just be sort of breaking and you're going to make a huge mess for yourself. It's sort of inevitable, but if you can try to get it off in bigger chunks, then that's the more ideal way to do it. And once we got it all the plaster off the one side, you can see Andrew decided to kick his way through the wall. We have made our way through to the other side, so it is time to take down those upper cabinets so that we can start knocking down this side of the wall, which has the plaster and the backsplash. I should give you my boots. Oh, it's okay. You're doing uh, less safe work than I am. I had to share that little audio clip because less than half an hour later, sure enough, don't I step on a piece of wood that has a nail sticking up, (laughs) have to pull it onto my heel and get myself a Band-Aid. I was fine, but it was just funny that Andrew was trying to remind me to wear proper footwear. I had made the kids put their boots on. Andrew had his steel toed boots on and then silly me. I was just in my slippers and so yeah you play stupid games you win stupid prizes I was okay I my tetanus is up to date all is good but I did put on my nice thick soled winter boots after that
So now the plan is to get everything cleaned up. We want to make sure that all those pieces of wood that would have come down that had nails in them we want to get those out of the house so that when the kids come back in this area there's no risk of them stepping on anything. I actually really enjoy the cleanup portion of the demo because it's like the hard work is somewhat done and now you get to clear it all off the floor and really see what you've done. Um, when you're cleaning up especially I guess with this plaster you feel like you should be able to fill up your garbage bags, but the plaster is very, very heavy. And so I usually fill it about halfway, sometimes not even, depending how big the plaster pieces are. And then I get Andrew to test it because he's the one lifting it all into the truck and then taking it to the dump and then lifting it all back down onto the ground again. And so usually we can get them about half full before they're like very, very heavy. And or if you fill them any more, you'd probably be ripping the bag. So, um, yeah, you kind of go through a lot more garbage bags than you would anticipate. But I, yeah, there's just something about this portion of the cleanup that I really, really enjoy. So this is day two. This is the next day. This was Monday. I had taken the day off and the kids were at school. So we are now finishing the last bit of demo for this wall. So we had to get rid of this cabinet that was under the cupboard in the corner there because obviously we couldn't pull down the wall in that section with this cabinet still there. So we're taking this down. We're going to finish getting the rest of the wall, um, the plaster part of the wall out and then uh, do another bit of a cleanup and take down the plastic and see how things are looking. We're gonna take down this part of the wall that is not load bearing. So I just wanted to show you, we've got the saws all out here and we've got all these blades for it. And I just learned about this. So see here, this one says wood with nails. So this blade can be used if you're gonna cut through wood that has nails in it versus some of them, let's see if I can find one. Like this one's just for metal. And then there's other ones with uh, bigger teeth that are just for wood. So fun fact, if you did not know that, so we're going to use this guy because we've got some nails obviously holding our wood up. There you go. <laughs> sure it's always clicked in. Come on. <laughs> oh, you got to put it on the right side of the thing. <laughs> that would help. We're cutting down our wall and we just found this fancy drawing. Wonder if this was the owner's wife. Not messing around.
for cleanup, I tried to sweep up as much of the sort of big chunks that I could <laughs> of like plaster and stuff like that. Um, and then we brought in the shop vac, but probably about 10 minutes into using the shop vac, um, we started seeing sparks um, in like the, I think it's like the air intake area and we were smelling smoke. So we decided to stop using that. <laughs> it was an old shop vac, so it didn't really owe us anything anyways, but um, so then I went back to using my broom. I tried to get as much as I could out of the cracks and then I went through with my Dyson just to get the really fine stuff. After this, Andrew did actually go ahead and clean the filter of the Dyson. He's always really good about remembering that. I never remember to clean the Dyson filter. Um, so he did that um, so that it wasn't all full of dust when we go to clean the rest of the house. So really what we're trying to do here is get as much of the dust and tiny, tiny little chunks of plaster and all that dust up off the floor. I'm going through with my mop the first time. Look how satisfying that is. This felt so good because you just feel like you're so close to being done this part of the project. Um, so, I mean, my mop head was absolutely filthy after this. So I went over the floors once with this and then we were going to send our Brava out. Um, because after this, we were going to pick up the kids from school. So we wanted to be able to pull all the plastic down and send the Brava out to do a second clean of the floors while we were out of the house. So that when we came back, we wouldn't be tracking dust all over. Um, <clears throat> And the kids would be able to uh, go wherever they wanted and we wouldn't have to worry about nails and debris and all those things. So um, this sort of signal signified the ending of the first big project of doing the kitchen reno, which was getting all the plaster off that load bearing wall and getting that little section of wall attached to the load bearing wall down. So I hope you enjoyed this. There's going to be tons more videos as we continue along with this renovation. I'm also going to be still posting some cleaning videos and we're getting closer and closer to spring and summer and I'm growing all my seedlings in the basement. So there's tons of fun stuff to come on this channel. Here's the final product of what it's looking like now. Hope you enjoy and I hope you have a great day. Mm -hmm.